recap. Can you tell I'm excited? Um, just a little bit. I'm very excited, <laughs> and here's why. I'm your host, Kylie Hodges, and this is Sarah London. Hi. We may be the regular faces you see on here every week, but we have a new voice chiming in, and guess who it's going to be? I think I know. Diggy Moreland! Woo! I'm super excited. So, we have so much to talk about because the tell-all was juicy, Rachel's hometown was mm -hmm. also juicy, and we're going to give our opinions, but in just a few minutes, we have Diggy Moreland from this season calling in to give us his thoughts as well. So, we have a few minutes before he chimes in. If you're watching, hit that subscribe button, follow us on iTunes, Instagram, Twitter, all those things, at Pop Hearts TV. <laughs> Can you tell I'm nervous that Diggy's calling in? Because I, I can't even get through this intro right now. So, I'm very excited to chat with him while we talk about the episode before he calls in tell us any questions that you want yes. us to ask him chime in in the comments below any burning desires you've ever had to ask diggy yes we will ask him about his shoes so you can save that question for yourself that's my question i have to know how many pairs of shoes he has does he actually have 500 that's a very solid question that's more shoes than any girl i know yeah that's I more mean, shoes that's than crazy. all of our, my friends combined. He's like by far the stylish one on the show, though, Easily. so I'm not surprised. We're very excited to have Diggy on. <laughs> so before we have him call in, let's talk a little bit about the past few weeks. Okay. We had Rachel's Hometowns, and we mm -hmm. had the Tell All. Yep. And I have to say, I'm thinking more about the Tell All than Rachel's Hometowns, because that whole episode, it was good, but also I just wanted it to get, I wanted to push to Fantasy Suite. Yes, and I was just like, let's get this over yeah. with. Let's get it rolling. They mm -hmm. all kind of felt like the exact same. Mm -hmm. Every guy that mm -hmm. came in, even though they're three very different men, it yeah. was like, well, this just feels repetitive. Her parents yeah. are probably sick of it, and they're too sane to be on this. <laughs> Rachel's mom was really grilling Brian, and yeah. for good reason. But he was very political with his answers. <laughs> he was. He was. And, oh, can I, on that note, really quick? Mm -hmm. So at one point during the episode, he left, mm -hmm. and I was like, Okay, that was really weird timing. It was probably production. Yes. She tweeted out he went to call her dad. Oh. Isn't that crazy? So I know I'm like kind of getting ahead of myself here, but Wait, was that her stepdad then? Mm -hmm. That was Um I... no, 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 no. There was someone else there. Um I thought that was her dad. No, it was her cousin maybe. Oh, jeez. Something like I that. I hope he's not watching. No. You I... don't look as old as to be her dad. No, I, no. no. Well, it was just like this so weird moment. So he went moment. to call her dad. Do we know what he said? We don't what know what he said, but like? I mean, I, you can only kind of guess, right? Yeah. Wow. I know. Maybe a little, hello, sir, may I get your blessing kind of a yeah. conversation. And then, but wow. then again, we only saw him get up and leave yeah. because of the way it was produced. So who yeah. knows if the other guys did it too. Wow. Very yeah. juicy. A little bit of insight there. The more you know, Sarah London. <laughs> so let's jump into this tell-all a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, first of all, I love the bloopers. I know that's at the very end, but I just love them. We all know I love Dean. Yeah. Dean with the gum. That was the grossest thing I've ever seen. But also the cutest, no? I mean, you... Okay. For you, yes. Okay. For me, I was like, that boy just ate gum from behind his ear. I would send him home if that happened under my watch. Did that make America fall even more in love with him? Yeah, yeah it did. It did. It did. If I only we it. could all put gum behind our ear and make people fall in love with us. Right? No, I, I know, I know. He's like, he's like so cute that way. I mean, he could do anything and I'd swoon. I think all of America, like even all the teenage girls would just die yeah. if he did anything. Yeah. Um, we had a really good um, glimpse into Dean giving some sort of a rebel revolution a resolution with his hometown because we talked last time about how it felt right comfortable to watch mm -hmm. but he made a really great point that mm. he's on good terms with his family and it was really big of them to to do this yeah. which is really exciting yeah so oh we've got producer madison here and she's got diggy on the phone you guys i hope you've been telling us your questions you want us to ask him here he is hello diggy it's kylie and sarah can you hear us what? I can hear you. What's going on? We're hey. so excited to have you calling in. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us. What are you doing right now? I am. <laughs> I just finished eating. I am watching the Cubs game. Oh. And um, I'm trying to get my dog to stop jumping on the couch. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. <laughs> oh, my God. That sounds adorable, though. <laughs> and Diggy, Diggy, you're from Chicago, right? Correct. I live uh, pretty much downtown Chicago. You ever done uh, St. Patrick's Day there? Look, um, <laughs> when I first moved to the city, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, what? Like people are just so pumped about it. Yeah. I'm like, is it really that? And I went to University of Illinois. Oh, okay. We had our official St. Patrick's Day, so I thought like, you know, I'd seen it all, but it's just like college part two. Yeah. And everybody legit feels like they're like 21. 
one again, and they just go crazy. So, um, yeah, I've done it <laughs> a couple times, and it's just it's just amazing here. Yeah, I, everybody's Irish for like a day. Yeah, I, I may or may not have flown out there about four times. <laughs> Uh, it's like, yeah, you do it once, and you're like, all right, I'll never do it again. Oh, Next yeah. Year, you're back here again. So. You're back every year. <laughs> but, exactly. okay, so, Diggy, we got to we gotta get some juice from you. We just rewatched the tell-all right before we went live mm -hmm. so that we had it all fresh in our minds. How are you feeling after the tell-all was done? I am feeling uh, kind of relieved. Yeah. And I think going going into the tell all, you're like, all right, I know we're gonna talk about Kenny and Lee. Yeah. I know we're gonna talk about Demario and then Greg. We know. Uh, obviously, we'll probably talk about Dean and just kind of how he went home because obviously he was the most recent guy to go home. So. Right. Um, I, I figured those would be the topics, but I, I kind of really felt like the heavier topic would have been Kenny and Lee. Yeah. And then Lee kind of just like in, like his own lane as far as him and, and stuff like that. So. Um, I felt like it went pretty well. Um, obviously, you guys saw the edited version, but I feel like we were talking about Lee and, and just Lee for hours. <laughs> we felt that way, too. No, yeah, we felt like that. Do you, and so are you friends with, with Kenny? Uh, yeah, Kenny's one of the closest guys I, I'm, you know, closest to in the house, Aww. so Kenny is, okay. Kenny, um, is definitely one of my men. Yeah, and do you guys feel like, I mean, I know you said you talked a ton, um, uh, you know, to Lee and about Lee, do you guys feel like you got to him at all? I mean, it, like in a sense of maybe talking some sense a little bit? I honestly don't know if we did or not. <laughs> and, 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 and you know what? And it sounds bad to say because you want to think, like, we had, we spent this time, you feel like we had this intervention potentially, and you get to the point where after, like I said, you guys can see the whole thing, but it's like after, you know, 90 minutes of talking to him, he finally comes out and says, you know what, I, I don't agree with those sweets. I'm finally wrong, whatever. And I'm not gonna lie, like, I don't think he said anything like too prophetic that makes it seem like he should have had this big epiphany. Right. But it's just like, dude, it's just, it's just called being a human being. And I don't think, mm -hmm. uh, I really don't think he disagreed with those tweets. I think he was more so closer to like, I want this to be over and right. the guys want, want me to just say, I don't agree with the tweets. So let me just kind of cave in say that and I think that's where we ended up oh interesting because we I mean we saw him come to that conclusion like so quickly it felt like uh, on the, on TV but yeah. apparently it took hours no I mean it was at the point where like here's what here's what you, we would talk we would say something and then he was his, his response to everything was I'm, I'm uneducated or I'm ignorant as far as like I, I need to learn or I just was unaware and I one of the things that didn't air but I said I'm like Please, you say you need to learn, but you're almost 30. At what point <laughs> do you need to learn about how this is sexist and how this is racist? It's right. Like, if you, I mean, within, within reason, by 30, most people are who are going to be who they are. Right. And it's just like, you're not learning at 30 unless you're like a lawyer or a doctor or something like that. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is stuff you cover in like how to be a human 101. Right. And, and, uh, yeah, so. Huh. Well, so I wonder how his dating uh, future endeavors are going to go for him, <laughs> considering every single woman in America has probably watched him admit that he's racist on national television. Yeah, <laughs> and a little sexist. You, you uh, know what the funny thing is? And, and so one of the things I like to do is I like to live tweet the show. Right. And, Me too. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't, well, the first thing I said is, because I knew how this was going to go, the first thing I said on Twitter last night is, if you guys are a Lee fan, then you probably should block me now. <laughs> and and people were, were smiling like, oh my God, there are Lee fans or whatever. And yeah. I just, I mean, a lot of the stuff I say during my tweets, they're pretty much all jokes. But I was joking, but apparently there was a couple people like, oh my God, you were too hard on Lee and he deserves better. And I'm like, wow, really? Okay, I so clearly there are people that think Lee was the victim here. I mean, I think that's a deeper issue that reflects a great divide in America right now, and I don't know if we are the the hosts to break that down. Yeah. No. But no. I, I really do think he's not alone, and and 
There's a whole Don't get me started, but that's upsetting and shocking to hear. That's another podcast that we have to watch. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll invite you to Kylie and Sarah do politics. Yeah. You can be on that too. <laughs> Sounds like a nightmare. Um, All right. So let's let's talk about you a little bit. I'm so over Lee. Um, do, do you feel like you got to speak your piece to Rachel at the tell all? I do not feel like I did mm. just speak my piece. Okay. If you um, could tell her, if she were watching right now, if you could tell her anything, what would you say? I would, I, if Rachel was watching or listening right now, I would definitely tell her she didn't get a chance to see the real D. Um, and, and I think that I can't fault her because you had so many guys right. that were, were coming in and just like, you know, hey, I think we can be together. I think, you know, I'm here for you. Like I said, I, I was here for Rachel. But one of the things is, this is an experience that I have never been in before. And, and literally, and all the other guys haven't either for the most part, with the exception of probably Blake and Lucas. But right. um, it's you get to that point where you walk in this mansion, and I see there's cameras everywhere. And then you every move, like you're talking, and all of a sudden the camera pops up and whatever. So you just, you're just so worried of like how... You know what's going to be recorded. How it's going to be edited. Yeah. You know, what's America going to think? So I wasn't myself. Like mm -hmm. me. I mean, if I see a girl that I'm really interested in, I'm just going to walk up to her and talk to her, and just not worry about what I say for the most part. Right. But I think what got to me in this scenario is, uh, you know, you're just in a situation where you know everything you, you're doing is being recorded, and this, America's going to see it. So. Yeah. Um, right. And I, I think what happened to me is. I didn't kind of really be comfortable getting the groove until uh, it was too late. So um, if I had the opportunity to see Rachel, I would definitely say, hey, um, I definitely appreciate the opportunity. She was definitely been kind to me. And I just um, wish she had the opportunity to see the real DD. Um, but like I said, I meant that everything that I said when I left the show, um, even though she didn't end up with me, I do hope that um, as long as she's happy, I'm happy. Diggy, you're the best. If you could do this show again, would you do anything differently? And if so, what? Yeah, I'm coming out firing. If I, <laughs> um, you know what? If this is, you know what? I, if I come out, I'm like, yo, my name is Diggy, and I love you already. Like, we're going straight. <laughs> we're going straight there. Like, there's no question. No, I'm just joking. I would definitely um, probably be a little bit more outspoken. Yeah. Um, which, is, which is just funny, because... I was definitely outspoken, but when you get to uh, some of those dates and stuff like that, you tend to, well, I tend to, I'm not speaking everybody else, but I tend to, to close up a little bit. Uh, but I feel like we did have some great conversation. Yeah. But I think she, she just had some, some better conversations quicker. And the name of the game is people have to be eliminated, so. Right. Would you, so I have one question because I'm such a big Bachelor franchise brand. Would you change yeah. your limo entrance? Uh, or do you feel like you went yes. and you like hit it out of the park with that one? Yes, I definitely would have changed it. Yeah. So the thing is, I, I, I kind of have this big grandiose thing like I wanted to do. Yeah. And me, just me kind of being like, well, kind of like I am, like weeks before I even got to LA, I'm just thinking like, hey, like how does this work? Like, do you guys come up with stuff? Do I come up with stuff? Yeah. That was my job. We're coming up with ideas. <laughs> And so I love it. I'm like, I'm like, you know, how do, what do I have to do, whatever? And literally, we came up with what I did, like I think like a day or two before mm -hmm. I met Rachel. So, um, so yeah, I just I would have probably put a lot more thought into it and come up with something a little better. Yeah. That's that's always like one of my questions because I'm like, would I regret my limo entrance like yeah. to this day? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, JoJo came out with a unicorn on her head, and then she ended up becoming a bachelorette. So I feel like if you can just walk out with a stupid costume on, anything is possible. Yeah. But it's a great question. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. How is your dating life going post-bachelorette? Post-Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> we're, um, we're asking the hard-hitting questions. <laughs> it's, you know, I like it, because these are the questions that a lot of people don't get a chance to answer, so I love it. <laughs> Right. This is a, uh, it's very, um, it's, it's, it's a lot more active, I will say. Oh, active. It's, we're not going to define it's, that. I was just going to say we're at, we're not going to ask him to define no, I need to know. I need to know <laughs> specifics. No, it's, it's just so funny because now I'm so, I'm this guy that's a little bit more, like, you know, I'm more appealing to a lot of girls. I'm like, oh my God, you're so cute. And, and a 
I love the way you dress. And uh, I'm like, well, I've been looking for you all my life. And I'm like, yo, I work out at the same gym that I've been working out. And I've seen you like like 20 times already been going on the show. What's changed? <laughs> so, is this like... a lot of those. Like, um, what the most satisfying thing is, though, I had a lot of girls, well, a couple of girls that ghosted me. And... They ghosted they, you? Yes. Who are they? Yeah. We have a bone you know, to pick I, with them. I, I can't. I, I, would, I would love to say their names, but I will not do that. All right, but all right. I respect it. Man. I respect it. Yeah. Cool. Like, oh, my goodness. Like, I haven't talked to you so long. How have you been? We should catch up. I'm like, yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, so, uh, but the thing How is, dare like, they? The show aired, they waited. As soon as Chris Harrison announced everybody on Facebook, they got, like, two texts. From both uh, two of my exes, and they were both like, "Hey, long time to talk. We're hanging out." I'm like, "Hey, coincidence." Mm, that's a little weird. A little sketch. Yeah. But, but, so, but other than that, dating life's been pretty. Uh, um, it's been pretty fun. <laughs> Are you on any dating apps? Okay, so I guess I'm on them by default because I guess I didn't really get off. Okay. Um, oh, you never deleted so them. They're, they're they're still active. So what happened? Um, they're still like I think Bumble and. I think that's actually probably the only one that I'm on, but um, I'll randomly just be like on the bus or something like that, and just for fun. Well, look. So you like, you never deleted the apps before you met Rachel? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, oh. No, I didn't have my I didn't have my phone, so I was like, I felt like that was good enough. So. All right. Okay. That that is a good excuse. I'll let that pass. If it helps, we would swipe right. We think you're adorable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really shocked and sad about when you got sent home because uh, Sarah can vouch for this after the first episode I had you in my like hometown yeah, visits we both did we had you in top four yeah did you really yeah, yeah. you had a really great you had a really great package at the first episode like uh, I don't know you know what that means like your little segment about yourself and showing your personality and all your shoes and stuff I thought it sold you really well to be a very eligible mm -hmm. likable guy like they didn't make you like oh I raised chickens and I like to tickle people they made you look normal and fine <laughs> well, that, that was the thing I was like I told my mom you can't get your horse I told my mom okay um, if we to hometowns, I'm, I definitely would come here as opposed to go to my dad's house. So I'm like, yeah, just make sure the house is nice and presentable, whatever. And, uh, and my mom was watching my dog the whole time. And then so I get I get back home, and I'm like, yeah, I'm coming up. I literally just called her and was like, hey, I'm back. I'm coming to get Bila. And she was like, what happened to hometown? And I was like, yeah, uh, not, not going to be a thing tonight. So uh, I'm not sure about that. Oh, no, she... it was, uh, I, was I was surprised too. Yeah. I was very surprised. The breakup was hard on the whole family. I'm sorry to hear that. She was like, I cleaned the house. What are, what are you doing? <laughs> right. So she was just like, wait, you, the biggest part in that thing Americans have to say, she was just like, wait, you lost to Lee? And I was just like, yeah. I know. I know. Man. So and I, I, I wish we could ask, like, us personally, like, Rachel, what went into that decision? Because we were actually talking about that before you um, called in. Yeah. And we were shocked because she was already getting red flags with Lee. So what about these guys that weren't getting... Like, there was nothing wrong with you in the house, but people were complaining about Lee in the house, and yet she chose to keep somebody who's been complained about, and then you, who everybody loves, got sent home. That was a pretty big shock. Yeah, it was very shocking, and I, I kind of wanted to ask her, um, you know. Hey, well, if we know, ever see what, her, we'll ask. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you see that, ask her and just tell you, do you want to know? So yeah. I would love to know exactly, you know, why that happened. But, and, and that's the thing, it's, and I think the, the one thing is, had she kept, like, when I went on, is myself, Brady, mm -hmm. and um, Bryce. So if she had it kept... You know, instead of seeing myself, Lee, and like Bryce home and Ken Brady, I wouldn't have been too upset about that. But right. This is the point where, like, what what about Lee is desirable? Yeah. And, hey. and it's like, you, you see he's getting into it with Kenny. You heard him over here arguing, you know, with people trying to get their one on ones. Like, why do you want to keep it around? Do you really potentially see yourself or future with Lee? So, yeah. um, that's probably my biggest thing. That, and I kind of voiced that. Last night on um, the tell I was like, look, mm -hmm. you can't, she, I mean, she was an at the time, and I'm like, well, I'm pissed off at Lee because you stayed way further than I did, and it's just like, obviously, you had no interest in Rachel, so. Yeah. Do you 
Are you 100% over Rachel? And if so, how long did it take you to get over her? Um, I will say I'm 100% over her, yes. Um, well, that's good. Congrats. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> the thing is, not being here that long, it didn't take long to get over her. Right. Uh, so it was just like, man, she was really cool. Yeah. Um, all right, well, I guess I'm going to go back to work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of Get back on Bumble. <laughs> yeah, right? And it's so weird because a lot of people at this time didn't know because they were filming, so they didn't know you were on the show. Um, or you know happened to be one of those, you know, five of the sites and stuff like that. So, oh, that's um, interesting. It, it's, it was just very, a very interesting time. But yeah, it didn't take me too long to get over just because I felt like her and I relationship wasn't too deep, so I didn't get there yet. What did you say to your <laughs> boss when you got asked to come on to the show? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the fun fact about me is I was nominated to be on the show by my direct team, so... <laughs> So it's so funny because uh, the, the way this all started is oh my God. two years ago, my one of there was a guy on my team. He's married and he's like, "Dig, I'm like, what's up?" He's like, "You gotta watch Bachelor Paradise." I'm like, "There's no way that you really want to watch this show. You're only watching it because your wife's making you." <laughs> Needless to say, like two weeks later, I'm coming to work like, "Yo, Ashley, I will not stop <laughs> crying and it's pissing me off." Why won't Jared tell her that he doesn't like her? And literally, I'm having these discussions with girls at work, and it just, like, feels so fucking weird. And oh, my gosh. So that's, that's how it started, and then whatever, they're like, dig, you got to get on The Bachelorette so you should get invited to Paradise. And I was just like, nah, nah, so whatever. Long story short, they nominate me. I get a call from the casting one day, and they're like, hey, this is, you know, casting. And I was just like, let me call you back. And I was like, why is... <laughs> I mean, why is Bachelorette casting calling me and everybody just goes crazy? And then I tell people this, I did the bare minimum to get on the show just because it was a re really busy time in my life. Right. Um, with all the stuff I had going on. So I didn't make a video. Um, I didn't do any of that stuff. And I just literally did the bare minimum. And uh, yeah, I made it on. So that's how it kind of worked. So your boss was like, I already know you're going on this show and I'm willing to give you the time off. <laughs> I'm very fortunate because I work at a job where I have unlimited vacation. Amazing. So that's the only reason that I did it. And um, it kind of, the, the stars aligned for me. Yeah. So it was very, very easy for me to, uh, to, to do it. Yeah. Okay, we want to ask you a couple questions about your closet, but really quickly, are we going to see you in paradise? And if not, will you be the next bachelor if they ask you? <laughs> Um, let me see. What's the best way to answer this? <laughs> <laughs> I will say I'm a lot tanner than I was probably two or three weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> take that how you want it. <laughs> Diggy, we're not upset about the potential uh, seeing you without a shirt on on a beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are, you wearing, are you wearing contacts on the beach or glasses? I went. All glasses. Okay. So like, Prescription I'm, shades. I'm You're dedicated. I, I like it. Yeah. But I like yeah, it. I will say, yeah, I'm a lot tanner than I was probably prior to June. You know, okay. So, yeah. Have okay. you ever worn a bow tie on the beach? No, but I have not thought about doing it. Just <laughs> I kind of would have liked that. I was. <laughs> Why, the why did I not do that? I, I don't know. Why it. didn't you? That should, that should have been your limo entrance. What are you talking about? Like a shirtless bow tie. Yeah. <laughs> you really messed that one up, Diggy. I know. I know. I, I messed it up. Somebody <laughs> should have uh, reminded me to do that. Yeah. Well, next time we'll be here. Okay. So speaking of your wardrobe, Sarah has a question for you. Okay. So I've been dying uh, to ask this one. <laughs> How many pairs of shoes do you actually own right now? We are close to, I think, 610, if I remember last count. Shut up. And see, do you have a room for them? Because I dated a guy that had a room just for his shoes. Do you have that? Yeah, um, I kind of do. So, I have a, so I'm, I'm an only child. I feel like I need to preface that with this. <laughs> um, I grew up, uh, my mom loved the shop, so that's kind of how I started. But, so back home, I have probably maybe 300 pairs. Um, just because living down, down in downtown Chicago, just yeah. a spot that is going to allow me to play the field them all. So right. I'm not, I'm not there yet. So, 
Um, but yeah, in my apartment, I have like a lofted ceiling, so I probably have like 80, 80 pillars up there. And then I have oh, like some that lead like go all the way up the wall. Then I have um, some under my bed, and then I have three closets, and two of those are full of shoes. So. Oh my God. What? So I mean, okay. What if? Yeah. You meet a girl on Paradise and she's moving in. I mean, what happens then? Do you give up a closet? I do not give up a closet. Oh. Um, we, we, just, we just find a way to make this work. Um, okay. Just, we're, we're, we'll probably move in together and just okay. two bedroom, two bath. One, one, yeah, one yeah, bedroom's yeah. a closet. Yeah, one bedroom's a closet. Okay. Just, uh, yeah. Okay. Closet, my closet, and then, or, yeah, we're just going to... Okay. Hopefully she doesn't like to dress, and that would make it a lot easier. <laughs> She's just not going to happen. She just wears sweats all day. I can't see you with that kind of girl, though. No. no. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll work out. Diggy, has a relationship ever ended with you over your shoes or your, like, love of <laughs> style? Whether that's on your end because you were asked to make a sacrifice or on her end because she didn't like how much, like, passion for fashion you had? Here's the thing. Um, no... But it's definitely led to some arguments as far as like, mm. uh, like yes, you bought another pair of shoes. I'm like, yeah, like <laughs> you knew this before you you knew this before you met me. So why are we right. at this point? Why why is this now? I'm like, like, like don't try and change me. Yeah, don't try to change me. This is what you were attracted <laughs> to. You said you liked my shoes the first night. Little did you know, I had six hundred more pairs. <laughs> you didn't know what you so, were getting into. <laughs> you didn't know you were getting your into. So no, I don't think anything really ended because of it. But there were definitely probably been a few arguments. Like, oh, As you know, your shoes, or why are you buying another pair of shoes, or something like that, or why are you waking up at five in the morning to go camp outside of a store for shoes, something wow. like that. Wow, been there. Yeah. Hey, you could have better than you being a drug addict. I no, but actually, <laughs> you know, like. The funny thing is, I tell people that they're like, "Do you realize what the alternative is? Like, I'm just like, buying drugs or whatever, or being alcoholic." But no, I'm buying tangible items. Yeah, we could get a lot of people off the streets by turning them on the shoes. <laughs> you know what? You're really good, but tell people um, figure that out. I guess I'll just leave that there. It's my new charity. Okay, so, Diggy, one of our listeners wants to know, how many women have you ever brought home to introduce to your mom? Zero. <gasps> there was a big gasp in the room, in, in case you did not hear that. Zero! <laughs> so, Rachel would have been I your heard, first? I heard it. <laughs> I've brought zero women home to my mother. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> it's, it's been my mom's known about them. But it's, I've never gotten to the point. I think my longest relationship is probably like uh, about a year and a half. Okay. And she still years. didn't meet your mom? She did not meet my mom wow. because I had questions. I had questions mm. from like six months in. And Ooh. I was just like, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm there yet. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, that's it's, it's, red flag. It's funny because I've, I've met a lot of parents. So <laughs> as far as me meeting. Like having you know a girlfriend come home to meet my parents or mom or dad or whatever um, hasn't happened yet. So I'm kind of like Eric on the show. He's never yeah. Been a girl home yet. So what you're saying is you're a very eligible bachelor and you're also very picky. Um, I'm not necessarily picky. I'm I'm so laid back. It's crazy, but it's just like with something like that, you gotta be like I don't want to like bring mom a bunch of girls. I just mm-hmm. want to make sure once you're there, you're the one. Oh, I like Man. that. Yeah. The Pop Hearts team is swooning right now. Yeah, you have four new, new. well, we were already fans, but now even more so. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure, if I bring you home, I want to make sure you reach just like, like they're kind of like a final stand. Just let mom know that this is somebody that I'm really interested in, so. Love it. So I want to talk about the guys that are left. What are your thoughts yeah. on Peter, Eric, and Brian? Just overall, who are you closest with of the three? Three, I would say, oh, probably closest with Peter. Ooh. Um, him and I, him, Peter and I had some really good heart-to-heart conversations. I feel like she was early on in the house when I was still there, just over breakfast. I feel like Peter was kind of like an early riser, so we'd be up in the morning. He'd be up before me. By the time I get up, he'd be up. We'd talk. Um, and we'd have some good conversations. And, you know, Peter was one of those guys from the, from the jump, and I think you guys can kind of see that now. He was yeah. that, that guy that's like, I'm, I'm head over heels for this girl or whatever. Peter would literally say, like, you know, 
I don't know where I'm at right now. And he's like, you know, I'm not going to force anything just because of where, you know, the scenario we're at. So um, Peter and I have some really good conversations. Um, I would say next under that would probably be next closest would probably be Eric. Yeah. Uh, Eric, Eric is a very passionate guy. Like, very passionate. Yeah. Um, he definitely likes, uh, he wants to, it's, it's, it's weird how to word it, but he wants to, if he wants to be in a situation, he wants to be all in. And I think yeah. Eric, early on, he felt like, you know what, Rachel wasn't kind of, you know, giving him enough, exactly what he needs as far as Eric was trying to pry and try to get in and, and, you know, get to know Rachel a lot more. And he felt like, I think he felt like Rachel was putting her guard up. So I think um, he was a little frustrated a little bit because he felt like, you know, it was, the whole situation was difficult and he wasn't kind of getting what he wanted at the point. But obviously he's in the final three, so yeah. um, it uh, ended up working out for him. He got and what he wanted. Got yeah, then you got Brian at the end. And you, any, anything to say about Brian? Nothing, not much to say there? I mean, I didn't talk too much. Um, I don't have anything bad to say, but I mean, hey, if you don't, you're not here to get the anything Rachel, so it's all about that. Okay, okay. Interesting, because we didn't really get to see a lot of that on the show. Um, so about, like, the other guys, though. I mean, is is Dean all he's cracked up to be? I hate the fact that I have to answer this question. Um, but Dean is probably one of them. It's, it's like, like, fucking Dean. Like, this dude is so, I'm like, he's so lovable. It's just like, I hate it. Is he like that in person? We all tease him, but yeah, he's very, he's like one of the coolest I've ever met. Um, oh. And he's the youngest, which is probably right. you see that whole playful nature of him. We have, um, but no, he's, he's very cool. I, I would love me that. We have a lot of mutual friends, and that's the, the sentiment that I hear. He He's just like a lovable, fun guy. I mean, that's cool. I'm glad it's not just on TV. He's very, um, what I'll say is he's, he's down to earth, and for giving him, you know, success he's had on the show. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I think in this day and age, everything's kind of judged via social media and all that. But I think once you get to the point where, I mean, last last I checked, I mean, because it kind of pays me to check his Instagram account, but I think he was at like 450,000. Well, for, having, for having that success, he really hasn't changed. And That's I think, cool. You know, what, you, what you see is a lot of people at that point, like, you know, you get all the success, people want to know you, want to reach out to you. He's been pretty much the same the whole time. You start. And, and I think that kind of that kind of speaks to who he is. So he didn't start, you know, changing at all. He's not selling like some tea and and, and crest white strips or whatever it is. He's that's not happening. I don't think, I don't think he is yet. No, not yet. P Peter already oh. gave in. Peter's doing FabFitFun boxes. Oh, I mean, come on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I just pulled it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Diggy's not saying anything because have you been getting offers? I mean, I wouldn't blame you if like HelloFresh was dangling a paycheck at you. But I have. But I haven't, um, I haven't done anything yet. I, we mean, can, I, I feel like the time will happen, well, but I will probably. You need, you need to do like a collab with Nike or something. You need to just customize yeah. a shoe. Or, or you can do the FabFitFun box and send it to us. We will, yeah. DM, we will DM you our address. Yeah, that's awesome. No, I think I'm, what I want to do is I, I, I have, uh, I've always, like I said, I've had a passion for fashion and stuff like that. So I think what I'm going to do is probably going to be more geared towards that route. Cool. And so we'll, we'll see what happens outside of this. Yeah. I love that. I like it. Um, yeah. Okay, Diggy, we also have a question about the mansion. What are the sleeping arrangements like? Were you waking up spooning with any of the dudes? No. Um, so what I will say is, so. Well, all of our fantasies are I... out the window. <laughs> yeah, they're gone. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. God. Actually, I'll give you a tip in a minute, but what I will say is, um, so we, we bunk beds, this whole bunk bed did have in my room. It was myself, Iggy, Jack, Adam, Blake, and Jamie. Okay. Um, and so we, we were in the room together, and, uh, but yeah, those bunk beds are small. Oh. Like you roll over, you roll, we roll over once, and it's, you're pretty much on the ground. <laughs> uh, Sounds like so college. <laughs> It's exactly, you know, it's even worse than college, because college, at least you have, like, the twin extra long. Right. Like, here, it was just a regular twin. So oh, my God. So, kind of, like, almost hanging off the bed. 
and uh, so yeah, it's and I'm not, I'm only like five eleven, six feet, so it's like I'm not the tallest dude. So we had some guys that are in there like six three, six four, so you know they're kind of struggling. So <laughs> that um, sounds terrible. I'm no longer jealous about being in the mansion. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, you don't have to sleep in the bed. So obviously, you can sleep on. There's some nice couches. Mm-hmm. And there's mm-hmm. outdoor, outdoors. So you can literally sleep on you want to. But, I'm going to sleep on a floaty uh, by the pool. <laughs> I mean, there, there are several times where I fell asleep in a hammock, and it was great. So, uh, do you... I don't know if this is pop parts appropriate, but I'm going to ask it anyways and probably get in trouble. Well, I'm... The amount of alcohol that is consumed, is it as much as they say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I think it was me. One day I just remember me, Kenny, Iggy, and Dean were playing cards one day. We went through a whole bottle of Hennessy. And then, like, literally within 10 minutes, another, another bottle literally appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> we just started drinking again. And we started, you know, playing poker, and you would buy it with shots, and it was just... When... Oh! It was, where's the, where's the footage from that? Can we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would love to see it, too. I was surprised it wasn't on the blooper reel last night, but, uh... There were definitely some bad decisions that were kind of made um, as a result of liquor. Oh, oh goodness. Um, yeah. so, okay. Who were you surprised made it as far as they did? Who am I surprised made it as far as they did? I'm going to say with the exception of Lee. And I was going to say, I won't put the words in your mouth, but Brian. <laughs> I, I was, I was going to say, like, it was, it was going to be Lee. Okay. Um, you know what? I, I was going to say Eric. Mm, and I was going to say Eric only because I thought he was going to have a breakdown at one point just because he was getting so so involved yeah um and you can do that saw earlier on he was just like you know he snaps off Lee, and i think eric was really passionate and i think he, you know um eric got to the point like stop putting my name in your mouth and i thought he was really gonna fight somebody yeah um at that point so i would say i definitely thought eric was just gonna be one of those that was just kind of like you know what i'm really trying i'm really trying i didn't think rachel was giving me you know what um you know, what he wanted, and I thought Rachel would, might have been like, you know, this is too much for me, and it's in the right. But, you know what, I think she ended up saying that Eric uh, was somebody that she was really interested in, and, and yeah. when you are in a situation, and you're like, this guy's just a year for me, uh, that's somebody you want to keep around. So. Right. Hmm. And I just like, I don't know, this is me being a little transparent here, but I feel like I don't know, of the last three that are left, he brings, like, a little fun. Like, the whole situation, from what we can see with Peter, is, like, so serious and focusing on them being together forever. And then you have Brian, who, so sorry if you're friends with him, but he's just, like, a creep. And then you have Eric, who is super fun, right? I mean, I, I don't know. He brings he brings a lot of fun to the table, so I'm yeah. glad he made it, for sure. Yeah. He was a surprise, though. He's a breath of fresh air, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, Eric's definitely one of those that likes to joke around a lot, dance a lot. So, um, no, it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. Who and, do you uh, have a? F- and you said you watched this show before, right? I watched Just Paradise. Oh, Just Paradise. Okay. Just Who was your favorite on those shows? You said Ashley I, Jared. Um, the favorite on those shows. Yeah. Um. I have the biggest, biggest crush on Kayla Quinn. Ooh, oh, she's adorable. Man. She's really she's cute. So, she's so cute. Um, have you met her yet? I have not met her yet. Um, is she following you on Instagram? <laughs> I don't think she is yet. I don't, I, I mean, as of uh, this afternoon, she was like, I definitely checked. But, um, <laughs> No, she's not yet. But we've okay. talked. We had, we had a few conversations. So okay, be the dicky that you say you are and yeah. contact her. Tell her you think she's cute. Get out there. I know. Yeah, we've uh, yeah, we've definitely had some conversations. So and I think we're going to go see her like sometime in the next month. So. Uh, what? Be, uh, we are getting the insight happen. here. I'm loving it. We're getting a scoop. I love it. She's cute. Yeah. Go for it. She's very cute. She's very cute. Not um, like you needed our permission. Like favorites from the show, um, I would say, um, I'm trying to think who else was on. Uh, I mean, uh, oh, uh, I mean, Alexis and oh. Raven are probably two of the most like, like funny people I've ever met. I 
I love like, them. Down to earth. I love them to death. Oh, I love um, them. And then you have some people that are just in different categories, like Danielle, Small Bee, she's so cute and just so, like, she has the best heart in the world. Aww. Um, Jasmine, I mean, so hilariously funny. Yeah. You know, we talk all the you know, just whenever I, like, I talk to her, she's hilarious, so. Um, but yeah, so those are probably some of my favorites that I actually got a chance to meet. So. I love it. I Sounds like a fun little community. Like a fun, you know, I want to be a part of the franchise, hang out with everyone. <laughs> no, it's, it's so cool. It's just like, oh, it's, it's weird because you watch Paradise and you see these people. Right. And then, yeah, straight up, I'm literally sitting on the beach talking to Amanda Stanton. And it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of crazy. And she seems like oh, a sweetheart, too, yeah? She's very sweet. Yeah. Very sweet down to earth. Um, cool. Very sweet, sweet girl, so. Oh. All right, we have the most important question of the hour to ask you. Who do you want to win, and who do you think will win when it comes to being engaged to Rachel? I want Eric to win. Um, okay. I want Eric to win because I feel like Eric has come full circle. Yeah. He's a guy that literally says, you know, I never brought a girl home, and I've never told a girl, I've never been in love, I've never told a girl I love her, how you phrase it. And then now, you know, he's evolved in front of our very eyes. And yeah. Eric is like, you know what? I'm bringing a girl home for the first time. He's like, I'm falling in love, and I love you. Like, he's literally going full circle. Mm-hmm. And when you have somebody that comes up and does that for the first time on national TV, mm-hmm. you yeah. just hope that ends well for them. So mm-hmm. um, I really hope that she picks, I want her to pick Eric. Do you think um, she does? I be surprised. Do you think she does? Yeah, realistically, who do you uh, think she'll pick? I, I, I realistically think she picks... I don't think she does. I want her to, but I think she does. But I realistically, I think she picks Peter. Just because I feel like the connection that they've had has been so kind of like electric. And I feel like she, Peter has this... Like Everybody loves Peter. He has this, this aura to him. I mean, he's mature. Um, and he, you know, he just, he's very charismatic. And I think he, he doesn't give her anything that doesn't seem genuine. Yeah. Like Peter is probably one of those guys, you know, like, I don't know. He said, I think so, but I'm not sure. And I think that's what kind of intrigues, what kind of intrigues Rachel. Yeah. Um, because you don't have somebody who potentially is just like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you what you want to hear or, or whatever. It's more so like Peter is that, that, that kind of guy that's kind of making her work a little bit and I think she maybe likes that so she I needed that she probably she might end up choosing Peter yeah she needed that she needed that challenge yeah she needs a challenge I mean she's a lawyer you know I mean she's a, she, she probably loves challenges so yeah I, I think she probably chooses Peter even though I want her to choose her <laughs> you know Madison Wisconsin is only a couple hours away from you in Chicago are you and Peter gonna be like weekend buds going to visit each other uh, <laughs> yeah actually I'm gonna see Peter sometime soon I think we're gonna work on some stuff cause I'm you know I'm physical trainer cool um, and so I think we're gonna do some charity stuff up there I love and, it uh, Get some, get some stuff rolling. So uh, Peter is a guy that I definitely keep contact with. But yeah, Madison's only like literally two hours. Nice. Madison's my hometown, so put on Instagram when you're there. I will literally fly home to hang out with you. <laughs> yeah. I definitely will. I'm pretty sure uh, Madison would love to see you back home, too. Yeah. It's the best city ever. The second best city ever is Los Angeles. So if you're ever in town, please let us know. We would love to have you come on in person. Also, I am the only one who's not single, and I have three beautiful co-producers uh, who what? I'm sure would love what? to meet you. Actually, it's funny. I'll be in L.A. this weekend. So, uh, yeah. Hit us up. Yeah. I, will, uh, yeah, I will definitely reach out to you guys, and uh, we'll see what happens. Perfect. We will. I will arrange a three-way date for you with all of my co-producers. <laughs> it's a three-on-one. A three-on-one. Three on one. We'll bring the roses. The first uh, non-group date. Well, I guess three-on-one is group date. Yeah. I would hate that. It's a smaller one, though, right? I mean, it works. <laughs> Hey, Diggy, thank you so, so much for talking with us. This was the best. Uh, the best. I wish I was single so I could hit on you more, but I'm not. <laughs> um, our viewers love you. I can't wait to see you on a beach in a few weeks. Um, We're stoked. Is there anything else you want to tell to all the Pop Hearts listeners that you feel like you haven't gotten to say? Um, no, I mean, I just want to ask you, know, is, I don't want everybody to think I'm as quiet that as, you know, the show portrays me. Um, I talk a lot, I talk too much, I'm 
much. I'm very goofy. I love making people laugh. And so anybody who follows me on Twitter knows that I never take myself seriously. So, yeah. Just know, I love it. Guy. Love that one. All right. Well, now we know. We know Diggy is not quiet. He's a good guy, and he's super fun. So we will tell everyone that we know, um, and we'll spread the word. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks for joining us. This was super fun. Um, we're, we can't wait to see you on Paradise. All right, ladies. Have a good night. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, Bye, Diggy. Diggy. We love you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just said I love you to Diggy. Um, I hope my boyfriend and future fiance is watching. I didn't get my chance. <laughs> I wanted Diggy. To, I wanted to also tell him that I understand why any woman would feel threatened by his shoes. Because if my boyfriend spent that much money on shoes, I would be like, when are you going to spend that much money on me? Right. Where are my flowers? Where yeah. am I? Yeah. But you know what? I respect it. Yeah, I respect don't it too. Don't change. Don't change him. No, we, we love, love it. you, Diggy. I'm very excited to hear he's going to be on Bachelor I, uh, in Paradise. Yeah. Summer. Yeah. Oh, I'm so it's excited. Going to be a great season. We have the finale finale next week how are you feeling so excited um i mean i i don't know what's gonna happen i mean i have no idea this has been the yeah. weirdest season ever i think everyone agrees um yeah. but because of that we get to meet gems like diggy and i i love that that's like the best part about the bachelor franchise is these cool guys come out of nowhere and yep. cool women mm -hmm. um so we'll see we'll see awesome well you guys know what that means tune in same time same place next week we are going to recap the finale there's going to be tears there's going to be laughs and there's potentially going to be an engagement Ooh. so thank you all so much for watching make sure you're following us on facebook facebook.com slash pop you mm -hmm. will get a notification when we go live next week at 7 30 p.m Pacific you all want to miss time. it you do not want to miss it and follow us on all social media channels at pop hearts tv we love you all so much thank you for watching Been see you fun. next week bye